Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Gene Stealer Cult video. As per tradition, before we get into today's video, I want to say a big thank you to Aaron Price for sending in these really cool pictures of his Sentinels, both armoured and scout varieties. Absolutely love the paint scheme, love the chocolate chip uh, uh, camo, love the, the yellow end on the Hunter Killer Missile, absolutely fantastic uh, colour scheme, fantastic models, really appreciate the action shots uh, and just thank you Aaron for sending these pictures in. If anyone else has got any cool pictures they'd like to use in my videos then please post them on my Facebook page, there will be a link down in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into this heresy, what are we going to be talking about today? We are going to be talking about Gene Sula Cult, we're going to be talking about ambushing. Now. That's a little bit vague, but as the cult, I like to keep my motives in the shadows, my ideas in the shadows. But I'm bringing one out into daylight now. Basically, guys, my current strategy with my cult is to have waves of ambushers. So, for example, I often have, uh, you have to be able to have the ability to get past screens of Gene Silver Cult. So, you have to have multiple waves of ambushing, and your ambushes tend to be used to get your most powerful close combat units into into range. And how you do that is typically, how I do it, is I take Cult of the Fallen Armed Emperor to get me a plus one on my charge range. I then have a Clamorous to give me another plus one on my charge range. And I use, but very key to this whole stratagem, is I use the stratagem A Perfect Ambush, which lets me move D6 inches after I've popped out of the ground. Now, I can only really... Uh, do this. I can only currently my current strategy is my current strategy is I have a turn two ambush where my acolyte bomb comes in, for example, and there that's the slightly cheaper bomb, slightly more sacrificial, and I, they come in. They have they can cover a large area and they can clear a large amount of screens. I put my from beyond on them. I can clear a large amount of screening. And uh, what I don't kill, I can tie up in combat. But they tend to clear the first screen. That's combined with my you know, shooting units, which can help clear that screen as well. And then turn three comes along and I deploy the aberrants. And they tend to break through the screen and get into the meat and just tear things to pieces. Okay. Now, the problem is, is, what if someone has two layers of screening? What if someone has two layers of screening? You might get, you know, your acolytes are going to go in there, clear the first wave, but then they're going to die, and then the second, then your aberrants could be potentially wasted on a second screen. And then you've, you know, your enemy hard hitters could be left relatively safe, which is bad. So we need the ability to be able to clear multiple screens. At the very least, take a chunk out of them. How do we do this? Well, I think I found a way to get another screen, screen clearing ambush going. I'm talking about the stratagem, telepathic summons. Let me read it to you. This stratagem at the start of your psychic phase, uh, select a cult psycho model from your army. That model cannot attempt to manifest any psychic powers this phase. Instead, roll 3d6. You can add one new cult infantry or bike unit to your army if it has the cult ambush ability and its power rating is equal to or less than this roll. Otherwise, no new unit is added. That unit is immediately set up on the battlefield anywhere that is more than 9 inches away from any enemy models. Now, I know what you're thinking. Boom! Let's get in another acolyte bomb. Perfect ambush them forward. Well, sadly, we can't do that. A perfect ambush only can be used in the movement phase. This is done in the psychic phase. Now, potentially you could use something like lying in wait. But that says when the unit arrives via cult ambush ability as reinforcements. I don't think these are technically counted as reinforcements. Correct me if I am wrong. I would be dubious about being able to use lying in wait and telepathic summons at the same time. Could be wrong. If someone knows for sure, put it down in the comment section below. No. So therefore, I don't think we really, you know, we don't really want to be using this on close combat units, and it doesn't seem like we're going to be using it on a hand flamer acolyte bomb. So, 
you know, because close combat units, you might be able to get a 7-inch charge via a Clamavus and cut the Fallen Emperor, but having a 50-50 chance to get a charge off is not odds that I like. So to me, this is all about shooting. This is about getting into shooting range. And therefore, we need to look at our shooty infantry and bike units. Well, let's take a look at the biker unit first. We're going to look at the Astalan Jackals. Now... I think this could be very powerful on a big unit of At Atalan Jackals, but maybe you've got to roll under their power rating. Now, a basic unit of Atalan Jackals is only three power. Okay? It's only three power. But really, you, know, you get four Atalan Jackals, that's 40 points. You could get, like, they can have a shotgun and a... Uh, Auto gun, I think some of them can have that. But generally speaking, I don't think that's the best use of your points. Um, and it's going to be difficult to get those. Remember, think about the power. The average of on 3 to 6 of the power level is like 10. But, yeah, you know, I wouldn't bet on that. Because, obviously, you know, if you start adding in another 4 Athlan Jackals and then start adding in the quad bikes, that is... If you take an eight-man squad with two quad bikes, that is ten power. Now, you could get that, but you might not get that. Uh, and, you know, I just don't see it being worth it on the on the bikers. I don't see it being worth it. Unless you can use the the lying in wait strategy. If lying in wait works, this is perfect. And let me tell you why. You take four Aslan Jackals, it's three power level, which means you can never fail to bring them in. And you bring them in, and you bring them in with demo charges. And then you start throwing those demo charges. Very, very nice. I think I would not plan on using it with, with Atalan Jackals, though. Okay? I think power level, I think they or they can just be caught ambushed in. You know, I think they're fine as is. Now... The good thing I, I do want to say before I go any further that the way the the stratagem is worded, you can you can roll the dice and then choose what you summon in. Okay, so you roll the three d six for the power level and then you see what you get and then you go, oh I'll summon this in. Now that can be very tempting for you to leave a rather arbitrary amount. You could be like oh, I'll just leave two hundred points out and then I can like bring in a huge unit of jackals if it, if the if the time if the if the if the opportunity arises. I wouldn't do that. I would I would plan what you're going to bring in and pretty much consistently bring in the same thing every time because then you can work it into your plans a lot easier. Okay? So that's why I'm like, oh, yeah, don't don't plan on bringing in a 150-point Athlan Jackal unit. Also, this is two command points, guys. It's not exactly cheap. So don't be expected to be doing this more than once in the game. It's for turn one. That's what it's for. So really, this brings us to two other units that you can really use it on, which is a Brood Brother Infantry Squad and Neophytes. Now, I'm thinking you probably want to use this on Neophyte Hybrids. I think so. I think you want to use this on Neophyte Hybrids. I think Brood Brothers are okay, but I think there's a reason I want to use it with Neophyte Hybrids, right? Because I can then use... I can have a, a Jackal Alphas nearby and give them plus one to hit. Which makes a big, big difference. And then I, if I make them Hive Cult, I can give them another plus one to hit with uh, Chilling Efficiency if I get it off. I think that's much better. Much, much better. And also... Near for hybrids, it's only five power level to bring in a squad of 20 of them. And it's the same if you want to bring in a 20-man squad of Brood Brothers. So I think, realistically, it's, you're, going to, you're going to use it to bring in a 20-man squad of Near for hybrids, rapid fire range, plus one to hit, uh, maybe plus two to hit. And you can really use that to help clear a screen. That's 40 shots. Don't forget a couple of grenade launches in there. I think that makes. I think that would be the best way to do it because you remember you're not you're relying on this to clear a screen on its own. You're having this help 
clear a screen with support from the other shooting units you're going to have on the board. Things like uh, Neophytes and Goliath Trucks, Ridge Runners. You might have some Acolyte, um, not Acolyte, Atalan Jackals which are boosting up the board. You know, you've got options. Now, 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 diddly, ow. If the Lying in Wait stratagem works with it, this opens up many different strategic options. It opens up the fact that you can use uh, Demo Charge Bikers, as previously mentioned. It opens up the fact that you could use uh, Lying in Wait on a 20-man blob of Acolyte Hybrids with Hand Flamers. Uh, it opens up the fact that you could take Neophyte Hybrids with Shotguns, which I think would be really good. 20, I, but it is, bear in mind, that will cost you four command points to do it. I think that the key to this tactic is to keep it cheap. Keep it cheap, keep it cheerful. Put 100 points to one side, summon in 20 near for hybrids, have a uh, Jackal Alphas, you know, conga line some back, because you can put them anywhere on the board. Have a, have them, you know, conga to at least a Jackal Alphas so you can get the plus one to hit. And just help clear away some screens. And at the very least, you're going to roadblock the enemy. You know, you're going to you're going to clog them up in their deployment zone, and it gives you board control at the very least. And you can use this as almost like an anti-zoning out tactic. If people start putting loads of scouts down and stuff, you can use this. You don't care if twenty near fights end up being you know used to kill ten scouts. You don't really care. That oh, then they're slightly out of position because they've got guns that got 24 inch range, so they'll be able to plink some rifle shots off afterwards anyway. You don't want to have to waste your acolytes uh, in your with all your rock source to clear out a bunch of scouts that have zoned you. You do not want to do that. So there you go, guys. That's my tactic. Now I could be missing a trick. This is the first time I've looked into this strategy. I'm more than willing to accept that I've missed something. Could my fellow cult players? Let me know what they think about lying in wait. You know, because that makes a big, big difference. Because lying in wait with acolyte hybrids, acolyte hybrids are only three power level for for five of them. You know, if you could take ten, six power level for ten is not too bad. That's ten uh, hand flamers you could get there. Average, that's going to be 35, 35 auto hitting shots. That's pretty good. You know, it's not expensive either, really. It's like 80 points. Uh, so there you go. There you go. Um, so that's how I would use it. But what would you guys use it for? Let me know what you're thinking. Thank you for watching. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.